In this next module, we're going to talk about features. Uh, and especially for data science, we want to have inputs to our model to be able to predict the outcomes. And the features are the things that are the inputs for classification or regression. And we're going to go down and just define some of the terminology for machine learning, especially for those who come from an optimization community or that just don't have background or familiarity with uh, machine learning. So I'm just going to talk, uh, first of all, about some of the common terms from the machine learning area. The loss function is equivalent to what we'd call an objective function in optimization. And um, there's some equivalence in Gecko um, as well. When we do machine learning in the Gecko package, we might try to minimize some type of function. Or in machine learning, like in TensorFlow or others, there's going to be a loss function, and we're going to monitor that on both a training and a test set to be able to make sure that our model is performing well on the, on the actual model fit uh, with the data that we have, and then also on another data set that's going to be a validation set. Okay, the weights um, in our model are going to be things that are adjustable parameters that we're going to be able to adjust up or down in order to cause the loss function, like a sum of squared errors or mean squared error, to reduce. Okay, and then Gecko, we're going to declare those as FBs with status on. Okay, labels are the things that are the measured outcomes of our model, and those are the labels like in classification those are going to be is this a picture of an apple or an orange should i buy this stock hold it or sell it uh, so there are certain discrete decisions or discrete uh, quantized values that we have to select between and uh, in supervised learning uh, we need to we provide these labels in unsupervised learning then we there's no there's no label so for example a label might be a true or a false value okay that uh, and I want this this algorithm to um, help me classify these as anything on that side of the line is true anything on this side of the line is false and so you can have supervised methods or you can have unsupervised methods where there's going to be some data, maybe there's some separation between that data, and you want the algorithm to come up with the clusters for you. So this would be an example of unsupervised, um, and this would be supervised. Okay, so the features are the inputs. So for example, um, the location on the XY plot, uh, those could be features that help us select if this belongs to a true or a false. And uh, those are also the measured inputs to our model. Now when we train, what we're really doing is we're just optimizing the system. We're adjusting the parameters to minimize the loss function. Or in some uh, areas we say it, we solve the optimization problem. Okay, the test is really the evaluation. It's data that we didn't use, that we set aside apart from the classification or regression training to be able to evaluate our model on a separate and independent set. And then our regressor or a classifier, that is our model. So just a little bit of terminology um, for some of these, especially if you are familiar with optimization, but new to machine learning. All right, let's jump into some of the code. Uh, now this is going to be an example of stock data. It's a little bit different than some of the things that we've worked with already. Um, just a quick explanation, the date, the open price of the stock, the high, low, close, and then how much uh, was traded, the volume of that stock. So this is a little bit old. Uh, from a few years back, but I think it shows this uh, uh, some of these things about feature generation very well. So maybe we want to predict the future stock price. And so we want to look at different types of features that we can use to predict should we buy or sell uh, for the next day. Okay, so we might look at things like volatility. Uh, what is the difference between the high and the low uh, price? 
and uh, and then the difference uh, from one day uh, to the next. Okay, and we can also look at the change as well. Uh, the change, um, and it's getting, there might be some other features as well. So I just added two here, which are volatility and change. There's no difference from the first one, so it just starts with the second one. All right, and I might need to drop the not a numbers, and then also roll the close difference, um, roll that down by one so that we're predicting the next day's stock with the current values. So I'm just going to roll it down, and then also a buy or sell. Now that's a one or a negative one based on the change of price of my close difference. If this is positive, then it means I should probably buy so that I can sell the next day. I predict that it's going to be going up. And this is sell because I say, well, I'm predicting that it's going to go down. Okay, and this is a very oversimplified analysis. I wouldn't recommend using your real money to, um, based on this, uh, there are much more detailed financial models and analysis that are out there. Okay, so let's select the best features because we've just come up with you know, all of these features right here, but which ones are going to be the best at predicting the stock price for the next day? So um, a couple different tools that uh, we can use. Um, now we have our features plus the label, okay, of buy or sell, and we wanna figure out which ones are going to be the best. And let's go ahead and just uh, scale these as well. Okay, so they're all between, in this case, we're gonna use a min-max scaler, and that's gonna scale it by default between zero and one. So it's not a standard scaler like we were used to seeing before. Uh, in this case, some of this analysis, we have to have non-negative values, so I chose to do a zero to one instead. Okay, now the selection, I'm gonna use the select K best um, in order to give me uh, the ranking of the results. Now, um, it's associated with statistical tests. It uses a chi-squared statistical test for non-negative features to select 10 or however many you have best features for predicting the output. All right, so volatility, it looks like that one is the best. Um, so maybe in high volatility, uh, maybe it's going up or down. Uh, you know, we don't necessarily, haven't done that analysis yet, but it's a good feature for predicting the buy or sell. Okay, open price and change are also good. It looks like volume is um, not as good. Okay, so based on this information, maybe you want to drop uh, volume. And so from features, Maybe we do a remove, and then we'll remove uh, volume from that list. Oh, uh, let's see, I think I just did none there, so let me just go ahead and print out features, and you can see that volume is removed. Okay, so let's talk about feature importance as well. There's also a method that comes with certain types of classifiers, like for example, a tree-based classifier, can give a score for each feature of the data. So higher scores correlate to more importance and relevance for predicting the output variable. And so let's just run this and see what kind of features it suggests. Okay, now in this case, volatility uh, was high, open, volume here, and then change. Okay, and if I run this again, there's somewhat of a stochastic nature to this. Uh, so if you run it multiple times, you're gonna get slightly different answers. Okay, but volatility still appears to be on top. Now heat map also shows us uh, not the order of importance of the features, but it shows us how they're correlated with one another. So if a feature is strongly correlated with another, then they're collinear. They might be related, and so you might not need all of those features. You can just use a subset to help you predict because maybe the features are very related to each other. So you wanna select uh, the ones that are, are correlated. The most are those that are have the highest values, absolute value. 
So this says that volume and open, those are highly correlated in the negative sense. Okay, the ones down the middle, those just mean that it's correlated with itself perfectly. Okay, and this is also a symmetric plot, so you really only need the bottom half of this bottom triangular part of this. Okay, so looking down here, you can see which ones are related to which, and the ones that are not correlated with the others, those are maybe the ones that you want to say, these are unique features. I would might give it some more importance because it's not correlated with any of the other ones. So let's do our TC Lab activity. I'm just going to collect um, some data. All right, and this is going to go on for, uh, I think, three minutes. And while this is going, I'm going to uh, develop some new features to be able to predict the outcome, which is um, I want to be able to predict in the future what uh, is the heater doing? Is the heater on or off? And so if I just looked at um, you know, developing some features, I might have something like the temperature values, okay? And maybe you say, is the heater on or off based on this temperature? You might say, well, when it's increasing, when the slope is, let me draw this just a little bit different. Okay, so here is the temperature response. And you want to try to determine when is the heater on or when is it off. So maybe you say, in this period, it's flat. And so this would be off. And this one has a positive slope, so it's on. All right, so this would be on and off, and then back on again. So we want to develop a classifier that's going to help us predict when it's on or off. One of the interesting things about the TC Lab is you can turn off the TC Lab, but it will continue to rise for 10 or 15 seconds, just as the heat is conducting to the sensor. And uh, similarly, when you turn it on, it's going to take a little while for it to start showing that temperature effect again. So we can use the temperature, and we can also use the derivative of the temperature. But another feature that we might consider using is the second derivative of the temperature. So if we use a second derivative, that's going to help us improve, especially in these regions where it's starting to go down, but it hasn't, doesn't have a negative slope yet. All right, so let's go back here. It's collecting data, and I want to create these three new features from the data, including the temperature and the derivatives, and we will name those as data seven. Okay, so, um, and then we're also going to uh, select the best of those features and then also um, do heat maps and other things that we saw up above. Okay, so I'm going to have um, just the derivative one. That's going to be data seven. And I'm just going to make a very simplistic approximation here. In the next exercise, you'll see something that's a little bit more sophisticated. For estimating the derivatives, I'm just going to use the difference. And then for the second derivative, I'm just going to use the difference of the difference. Okay, not a very good approximation. It relies on finite differences. Um, and But we'll just say that those are first and second derivatives. And I'm just going to make a copy of data 7. That's going to be my new data frame. And my data frame is going to be D1 is going to be equal to D1. And data frame D2 is going to be equal to D2. And then I'm going to, because some of the differences uh, were at the endpoints, it has some not a numbers, I'm just going to um, drop, um, let's see, this is going to be data frame, and I'll drop not a number. Okay, um, let's see, and let's look at our data frame head after it's done. Okay, so this has run already, 
and I can see I have Q1, Q2, T1, T2, and now I have my derivative one and derivative two. Okay, second derivative and first derivative approximation. Um, and it looks like there's something wrong with the data. Okay, let's see if this, no, that looks okay. The heater was off and then it turned on right there. So it was constant for a little bit. All right, um, let's go ahead and the next thing is scale the data. So we need to do our fit transform. I'm going to insert a cell below and let's do um, a new data frame. This is going to be our, our new uh, value. This is going to be fit transform. And I'm going to fit transform data frame. Unfortunately, it converts it back to a NumPy array. So I've just got to get it back into a data frame. OK, and columns equals data frame columns. OK, so that just, um, I took the names from the columns before and then just converted it back into a data frame. And then let's just look at the head. OK, so this fits uh, fit transform using the standard 0 to 1 scalar that I had available before. S was just uh, 0 to 1. So you can see all of the values that are scaled. All right, and let's go down to ranking the features. We're going to use select K best. Uh, to do this. Now um, we've already imported uh, some of these so let's go ahead and just do best features equals select k best and I'm going to do the score function um, equals the chi squared and I'll do k equals all. Okay. And then let's just say my features are going to be equal to T1 and D1 and D2. So I don't want all of them. I just want a subset of the features. And then X is going to be data frame of my features. And Y is going to be the thing that I'm going to be predicting, which is uh, Q1, whether that is going to be a 0 or a 1. OK, and then uh, I want to fit. I'm going to fit best features and it will do fit and x comma y and then the data frame scores um, I'll do uh, create this back into a data frame instead of uh, just a, a, a numpy array okay and I'm going to do data frame and then fit and scores underscore. Okay, so that's where it's hidden is in the fit scores. And then data frame columns, I'm going to um, create a new data frame and x columns, and that's just for the plotting that I'll need. And scores is going to be, I'll add these together, I'll concatenate them data frame columns, data frame scores, and then I'm going to say axis equals one. So I'm just going to put those together, um, basically stack them next to each other so that I can uh, plot them. Okay, and then I'm going to do scores dot columns equals, and then this is going to be feature and score. All right, let's go ahead and just look at um, our scores before we plot it. There you can see the feature and then the score for each of those. So you can just use this information right here or you can plot it as well. So I'm going to do scores.index equals uh, features and I'll print scores again. Okay, there you can see it. Uh, I changed the index here to T1, D1, D2. And that just makes it easy for scores.plot to say kind equals bar. And I'm just going to make a bar chart and then PLT show. Okay, so you can see that 
derivative was the most influential one for helping me predict the heater on or off, which makes sense. There's a slope increasing or decreasing. But also there's an influence of T1. Maybe if you're at a low T1 value, that the derivative is going to be zero. So um, it really the derivative really depends on where you are at in the temperature. If you're a really high temperature and you turn off the heater, it's going to have a much more negative slope. Okay, and then the second derivative, add it a little bit, but not as much as um, not as much. Okay, so insert cell below. So um, let's just do feature correlation now. So how are these features related to each other? Um, I'll just do it right here. Okay, so I'm going to import Seaborn as SNS, and then let's get the correlation matrix, and that's just going to be data frame dot corr which is the correlation. And our top features, okay, are going to be correlation matrix index. And now I'm just going to plot these. Okay, so PLT figure. And um, I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger so I can see it or I can control the size of it. Okay, five by five. And then SNS.heatmap. And I want the data frame with my features, with my correlation, and annotate equals true, and cmap equals, and then I'll make this uh, look just a little bit better. All right, and let's get y lim in there and then plt dot show okay there's there's a kind of a bug if you have a certain version of uh, matplotlib it's going to be fixed in later versions but you just need to change the limits um, you just need to change the limits to be plus or minus I th I'm trying to remember how that works. I think it was the top and bottom of plt.ylim. I'm going to say it's the, I don't remember what it was, but it was like b plus 0 0.5 or um, b minus 0 0.5. Let me see if I can get this right on the fix here. I think I'm, uh, Close. Okay, no, I didn't <laughs> do that right. It was something similar to that where I need to do. Uh, uh, no, that's not right either. I'm just going to take this off. I forgot what it was, but you can fix that. If it's cut off halfway, you can add a little bit um, to it to get it to show the full uh, matrix. But we can basically see it here. It'll be fixed in a future version of matplotlib. So you can see the one values there, and then the ones that are correlated are D1 and D2. Those are heavily correlated. And then T1 and the derivative are not as correlated. So T1 and derivative, you needed to just select two features. You would select T1 and the first derivative. Okay, that's it for features. The next one is going to be classification, where now we're going to use our features and the best ones that we've selected to help us uh, uh, design classifiers. We're actually going to do this example right here where we use the temperature and the derivatives to help us determine if the heater is on or off with different classifiers.